right, welcome back everybody for a new episode of Hidden Gems. This is the video series where I talk about those books that are still probably tucked away at your LCS in those back issue bins. Just those kind of forgotten about, those undervalued, underpriced, uh, those things that could be ready to pop. They're just probably just sitting there in a box with nobody looking for these oddball things uh, at all. So hopefully you're enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Check out the uh, memberships and think about hitting that join button. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on on the channel and I'm finally getting back into a rhythm of doing my uh, regularly scheduled programming with you know hidden gems, chasing ghosts and whatnot. So make sure you're checking out new content drop in here basically every day uh and with that all said if you want to see the plethora of books i have for you this week just hang on for a few seconds after the intro and i will be right back All right, so I said plethora of books because I actually do have a lot of options, uh, things that I decided to go over. Uh, I start off with ideas, and then even amongst those ideas, those things kind of grew uh, to bigger than I had originally planned. And we're going to start off this show as we normally do with our quick artist retrospective. This is where I kind of spotlight an artist and just kind of go through some of their best known work, some runs that they did, some under, you know, underappreciated covers, some undervalued stuff, uh, first works, whatever I can find, uh, basically to kind of uh, check an artist's portfolio. Hopefully you guys are still liking that, and hopefully you like this week's selection in that uh, he's got a new book that just came out this past week. But the artist I want to talk about this week is Shannon Mayer. Uh, He's an interesting artist in that he does a lot of like digital painted work. He he teaches art and there's like a lot of like uh, videos you can watch of his on like even on YouTube, like, like instructional type stuff. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's he's got an interesting portfolio uh, of books to, that he has. Uh, great. He's mostly a cover artist from what I know, except for his new book, which we will get to in a minute. But the book that I think put him on the map, as far as my uh, knowledge of him as an uh, artist, was this dark red variant. This was like the limited edition uh, issue that was like, I, I don't remember what this one was limited to. It was like 100. This one might have been 100 or 150 or 250. I can't remember. I just remember dark red uh, when that came out out of uh, Aftershock. There were a number of these variants where they were super duper limited. You had like the trade dress version, which had one number. And then we had, that was the bloody variant, which I think was what was limited to like a hundred. There was also like foil edition, foil variant. There were a lot of different versions, not a lot, but a couple of different versions of this particular variant. And they were super low uh, printed because it was a smaller book. It, Aftershock is a, an indie title. And this cover just kind of grabbed a lot of people due to its, you know, it, you could see why, right? You could see why people gravitated to this book. That said, uh, Shannon Mayer does have a distinctive, not only style, but I want to say even pose, because you can kind of see a lot of works do look a bit similar, uh, at least when I, uh, the way I see it. But that doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, uh, J. Scott Campbell gets a lot of the same complaints, but uh, I, I appreciate the art for what it is. As long as I look at the piece of art, piece of art uh, you like it or you don't. Like, you should know right away, uh, pretty much, um, you know, whether it's good or not. To you, to you. Again, art is subjective. That said, the new book that I'm talking about that uh, Shannon Mayer is, uh, just released is this Siren's Gate, which I believe he not only did the uh, cover art, but I believe he does the interiors as well as writes the thing. So this is an artist doing the whole, you know, doing the whole show. And uh, I think there's like multiple variants that he did as well for this first issue. I think he did maybe four different covers of his own, uh, which is kind of interesting. I still got to check this one out. Uh, I think I ordered one, so it should be on the way. But I haven't gotten the, it in my hands to actually take a look at this yet to see what his interiors uh, would do. So, as like I said, all I know of him is as a cover artist and uh, a decent one at that. Uh, and you can see this familiar uh, signature down below here, the little Shannon that you know, he signs. <clears throat> but this is the new book that he has uh, that just came out this past week. The Sirens Gate, again, doing the writing, uh, cover, interiors, the whole thing, all done by you know one man. Now, uh, what I believe is his first work, we have to go back to 2013, and I believe his first is this uh, cover. This is, I think it's a Virgin edition, too. I think it's a C cover on Legend of Oz, The Wicked West. 
I think it's issue seven, and I think it's covered, like I said, cover C. This is one of those little oddball indie type titles. They have a couple of different covers, and some of these are just damn near impossible to find. So if you are looking for this first work by Shannon Mayer, good luck, because it's not only not easy to find, if you do find it, it could be pretty darn expensive. Now, just for frame of reference, none have sold uh, in the last couple of months that we could uh, share this pricing on, but there is one listed, and it be, it is a 9.8, but it is asking over $2,300. So it is not a cheap book if you want to go buy it right now. There's only one option, and the uh, admission price is over two grand. So keep digging. If you have it, you know. You know, go maybe consider go getting it graded. If not, you know, just, just keep it for yourself. This again is one of those things that may not be that easy to find. I think there is a foil edition of this book as well. I don't know what the release behind that, the you know, the print run or what if it was released at the same time, came later as a reprint. That I'm not sure about. But when I was doing some research, I did see foil versions of this, but I don't believe the original was foil. I believe the original is like this one, this 9.8, which is just you know a flat, you know, regular old virgin uh art cover. Now, apart from the dark red book, uh, I did see the dark red. I remember it caught my eye. I maybe pay attention to Shannon Mayer as an artist, but I did not buy one because I couldn't afford it. So that is not the first book that I actually owned of Shannon Mayer. I believe the first one that I picked up was this Red Sonia variant, which I believe was a store variant. I don't remember which store. I don't remember any of the details of that. Again, store variants as they go. I buy ones that I like just for myself. Sometimes I'll buy two in case I could potentially sell one to help pay for mine. That's basically all I do. I mean, I'm not going to uh, tell anybody to go invest in these things because for the most part, not many of these actually hit. Yes, there are the rare books that will spike and become very sought after uh, store variant wise. But for by and large, most of them don't increase in value and have high buy ins to begin with. So if you want to buy it, buy it because you want it for yourself. Don't buy it to try to invest because that's a game you're going to lose nine out of ten times, if not more. Just Again, keep that in mind. That said, there is nothing wrong with appreciating, you know, the art and spending your own money. It's your money, after all, to buy these if you want them. And I actually did, I believe, buy all three of these ones that I'm going to share because I like them. Even though when you look at them, we'll get to what I was saying before, and they're kind of similar in, like, the poses and the, the structure of the cover. This, this like, waist up uh, female spotlight here with Red Sonia. I also did pick up the, uh, I don't know if it was House, I think it's House of X. Uh, there's a trade dress and a virgin, uh, and then there's ghost spider as well. I believe there's a trade dress and a virgin. Again, waist up, sexy female. Yeah, that's kind of his, what he does. It, that's kind of his, his wheelhouse right here. This is what you see. Uh, waist up, sexy female, wheelhouse. Nothing wrong with playing, you know, staying in your wheelhouse. Just saying, I like these and I got these. Uh, I believe I might have even gotten, I think I got the Catwoman of this next bunch. These are a couple of more. Those were from 2019. These, I believe, came a little bit later. Uh, Fallen Angels, again, waist up. See it? Harley Quinn. I know that one got a lot of people talking because it's like, oh, she looks so petite, whatever. That doesn't matter. Uh, still, waist up, female. If anything, the Catwoman's a little bit different because we don't see the waist part, even though it is still, proportion-wise, waist up, female. But I do like the Catwoman. I do think I have that one as well. And that was the 80th anniversary special. Uh, so it's got that nice, it's like a thick, thick book and a uh, nice cardstock type cover. But there's just some uh, some store variants and ex you know, exclusives that you could see that that's by and large what a lot of his covers uh, are and were. He did do some cover runs that you can get right at your LCSs. There are still variants technically because I believe most of these are like B or C covers. Uh, and we're going to start off with one run that he did here in the uh, 2019 to 2021 range, which was on Vampirella. The first couple of Vampirellas were store exclusives that he did. You can see, I think it's like on issue one and two, he did some store exclusives. But then later in the run, which I believe is closer to the 2021 time frame, uh, well, 2019 with those store exclusives when he was kind of getting, you know, getting his feet wet. Uh, but there's 19 to, uh, I think there's like six or so, uh, or not, it says nine issues. So maybe six, seven, seven of these, uh, chunk of the run were, uh, I think C covers, which are all pretty cool. And they actually do grow out from that waist up, um, uh, you know, thing that I was just talking about. As you can see here, we got the full Vampirella. We got the full body of her sitting on a throne. Pretty cool. A little bit different. We move on. That was 19. And then you could see 20, 21 and 22. We actually do get a little bit of variation in the poses here. All right. Growing as an artist. I appreciate that. I like this stuff. Uh, and I do like these covers. They're pretty solid. 
Uh, and these, like I said, these are all C covers. So these aren't incentives. Uh, I shouldn't say these aren't incentives. These ones aren't incentives, but as you know, dynamite, there are incentives. They will have like three different versions of every cover. So while this might be the C cover and they might've had a Perillo cover and somebody else doing another cover, they will then have uh, virgin versions of all three covers. They'll have like uh, limited uh, color palette versions, the Copic ones, uh, they're just like the marker. Don't... They'll have multiple variants as they get through the minutia of different incentive levels of like one in seven, one in 10, one in 15, one in 20. Like yeah, it could be exhausting trying to figure out dynamite and their incentives it, it really can be if you don't know and don't look the week they come out good luck trying to figure it out uh, after the fact because it could be a real headache that said these i'm just showing you are the c covers but there are other versions of these same covers that are potentially uh higher ratio incentive variants if, if that makes sense so keep an eye out for the image you might see it slightly different than this whether it be virgin version or black and white version or partial color version it just these you know these are the covers so 20 through 22 and then the last three of this run uh of covers that he did are 24 23 24 and 25 and like i said you can see a little uh, granted 23 and 24 very close very close together, but 25 at least adds, you know, a Dracula type in there as well. So it kind of mixes it up, mixes up the flavor a little bit. That said, these aren't that tough to get a hold of, and these are not that expensive. For the most part, these are still selling anywhere between five and 10 bucks. Uh, even the 10 bucks, I think you can find ones cheaper than that. So these are still kind of hovering around cover, maybe a hair over cover price right now, but you can still probably find them if you go and look for them, if you're interested uh, to get yourself some uh, Shannon Mayer Vampirilla covers. Uh, and you can see here, even the ASCII price is four bucks, eight bucks, up to 10 to 12. Yeah, there are some more expensive asks, but for the most part, you can still find these things at an affordable price. Now, this was one run uh, that he did, again, that are not store exclusives. I want to make that, you know, these are books that anybody can get. Exclusives can be tough, like especially when they sell out uh, and they just become hard to get or figuring out what store had them in the first place. Uh, and then you go and look on eBay and somebody might overcharge you for something that's still available at the original store. You just didn't know to go look for it. That all said, Unholy. So another Vampirilla series, this one, 2022, uh, pretty cool. And there's also some Hughes covers in this run as well. So like I said, they do like multiple artists and then give you different versions of uh trade dress version and, and all that stuff as you get through the incentives. But again, different layouts now, definitely growing, definitely growing as an artist. And I like these, uh, I like these, pretty, especially that issue one. There's just, you know, pretty something, you know, seductive about it. It's, you know, pretty interesting. Uh, but he's done the six issues of this run uh, here. So we got one, two, and three. And then we'll take a look at four, five, and six here. And you can see again, a little more variation more variation in the poses and uh expanding on that limited uh waist up you know pose uh like portfolio that he had originally uh and like i said i appreciate that uh but these are pretty cool and just like the other vampirellas if not more so these are affordable these are something you can still find these are only selling for you know three bucks to maybe eight bucks so maybe even undercover to maybe a little over cover not expensive, not pricey things at all at this point. And you might even be able to sneak some of the variants in there uh, for even low cost prices because it's it dynamite. It's just, they're just out there. As you can see here, some of the ASCII prices, four bucks, five bucks, six bucks. And that six bucks is like a one in 25, I think. It's the black and white version. It, it's, as I said, it dynamite. They have so many different versions. It can be really, really confusing. But just buy the ones you like if you want to. If not, it doesn't matter. Leave them behind. That said, we do have one more regular cover run that I want to cover for Shannon Mayer before we get into some oddballs and odds and ends. And that's this Curse of Dracula, Cult of Dracula, sorry, from Source Point. Uh, he did all the B covers. And for these, these do kind of go back to that old style a little bit. But I think this was intentional. I think the point here for this run of B covers was to do almost like portrait style uh, images of all of these characters. Because they're all kind of like uh, belly button up, kind of like portrait style like more of a classical portrait image and you can see gorgeous art you know one two and three uh here again covering the different characters in this run. i didn't read this this run so i don't know the storyline behind this uh then you got four five and six but as again you can see all different characters all with a similar kind of portrait structure but still pretty well done uh, if you ask me and again these are very affordable uh i know they might have gotten some interest when they first came out but not like 
selling, you know, selling for a lot of money. Just, oh no, Midtown sold out for the cover for whatever reason, but they're still out there at your actual local shop. So don't let the certain online retailers selling out cause a fake uh, FOMO in you that you're not going to be able to find it because a lot of those books you still can find. Uh, that said, you can see it's selling for, I only can really find issue one is really good examples. The other issues are there, but it's not really much of a difference. Two bucks to like six bucks. Really? It's again, half cover to cover and maybe a little over, but for the most part, you should find these for cover or less asking prices again in that same kind of range, like two bucks to seven bucks, not expensive stuff at all. So those are some cover runs of regular books that you could find for Shannon Mayer if you're interested in him, in him as an artist, because again, a lot of his work are store exclusives. So you do have to pay a premium even to buy in at the start where you're talking about the $20, 15 to $20 trade dress versions. And then if you want the virgins, you got to get them in the sets, which are starting to run 40 to 60 bucks now these days. It's getting very expensive to collect comics, especially if you are a fan of cover art. So you, you can only buy what you really, really like. You got to be a very discerning shopper these days because most people can't afford to buy all this stuff. You just can't do it. And you don't want to overextend yourself buying things that uh, are really going to put you in a put you in a bind. I mean, they're only comics. And most of them, as I said, are not going to increase in value. Uh, and if you just want them, just make sure you're buying them for that reason, because you want them. Uh, that said, here are some oddball things that are going to be kind of tough to find that uh, Shannon Mayer did kind of early on in his career following that uh, Legend of Oz book. And one of them is this another, I think, Big Dog Inc. book, because I think that uh, Legend of Oz was a Big Dog Inc. Uh, comic as well, which is a very small publisher. But this Critter book, which, yeah, pretty cool. Girl with a cat. You know, not going to be easy to find this thing. I don't even know if this is the same book as what I could find out there, but there are like signed editions out there saying it's San Diego exclusive. So I don't know if they're all the San Diego exclusives and if they're all signed or if just there happen to be a lot of signed ones, but I did see a lot of signed ones. Uh, and it's saying something like limited to like, you know, like a low number, like 200 or 250 or something. But you can see one sold uh, back in August for like 50 bucks uh for this particular book and there are a few out there as i said that they all seem to be signed uh for the most part or they're all this uh san diego exclusive and they all seem to be this virgin uh anywhere from like 180 to 200 dollars raw asking prices at 400 bucks for a 98 that is not signed uh that that one is not signed but pretty expensive asking prices on this particular book so if you could find it you found yourself a nice little hidden gem there uh, that said, another early book that he did that's kind of cool and tough to find is uh, this um, this title. I don't even remember what the title is on this one. Uh, this is, I'm going to bring up the sold so I can find it. Oh, the Ursa Minor. This is the Ursa Minor Volume 2, number one. Uh, so this is a Baltimore Comic Con, I believe, variant. So somebody bought one and a best offer of 90 bucks. So they paid less than 90. I didn't bother digging in to find out what they actually paid. Just again, broad strokes, informational purposes. I'm not telling you to buy any of this stuff. I'm just sharing it with you because I found it interesting. And hopefully you find it interesting. And I want to give you the price ranges so you can see what these things are kind of selling for and what people are asking for for them. So if you do find it in your shop, you have some idea of what the market is and you can make the decision for yourself if you want to do it or not and uh, buy that book or leave it behind. That said, best off on 90 bucks is what this one sold for. But the other copies that are available right now are asking 90, 95 dollars raw. Uh, and then there's a 90 asking 450 bucks for this big dog ink book. Uh, apparently, it looks like it's a Baltimore exclusive and uh, again, pretty, pretty, pretty pricey. So, uh, and not going to be easy to find, I don't think, at a regular LCS. Like, this is one of those things you just got to kind of luck into, or you got to pay up and hopefully get lucky even buying online. Like, you get to it first when somebody lists ones for cheap. But one you might be able to find, and one that I have found out in the wild, because it's not going to be one of these, uh, you know, convention exclusives, which could be tough. I mean, convention exclusives could be tough because they don't really, you know, move around too much. I mean, if the convention's on the West Coast, mostly most of the buyers are going to be West Coast buyers. Not too many people fly over to most of these conventions. I know San Diego is a huge thing, but you know what I'm saying? Like, just the bulk of them are going to be in the area of where that convention took place, like Baltimore. Yes, you'll have a few people come out, but the by and large, a lot of the it's going to be within driving distance of that con is where you're going to find the copies. Uh, but that's it. This next book is one you might be able to find at your shop because I found this one at uh, shops before. And this is uh, Grim Fairy Tales. Yes, it's a Zenoscope book. You might be not be surprised that he 
Shannon Mayer has worked with Zenoscope because, well, you know, the sexy female. What do you want to do? Uh, that's what it is. But this Wonderland issue 37 is another early work of Shannon Mayer's that you can find. And this one does pretty well if you can find it. Uh, if you find it in like a regular back issue uh, tucked away. Like I know there's early art germ stuff you can find on some of the Zenoscope stuff. And uh, Shannon Mayer's another one that you want to keep an eye out for. Kunkka, uh, you know, Kendrick Lim. A lot of artists get their start doing this or will have some work early in their careers doing this because it, you know, it pays and they're, they're good at it. So this book in particular, if you could find it out there, it could sell for around 40 to 45 bucks. You see best offers on those. So you got to figure it's going to be a little bit less than that, but that's what's actually sold recently. But the asking prices are kind of in the same range. If you can find them, granted, there's one in that lot that's asking 25 bucks. So you can get one for kind of cheap there, uh, or 225 bucks, uh, for a nine, eight, not a cheap 98 and that's it there's no other copies so the copies even at the 40 to 40 dollar range those are the ones that were on the market are now cleared off so uh this is, doesn't come up a lot but like i said this is still one of those things you can find in a shop that might have some back issues of uh, zenoscope go flip through those weird wonderland books uh because you never know what you can find just look for the cover art that grabs you and there's a good chance that you found an artist that you already know and just didn't know that's a cover that they did and be like oh my god this is an art term oh my god here's the shannon mayor just flip through. You never know what your eyes will catch. You know, trust your instincts. That said, that's my little short little uh, retrospective on uh, Shannon Mayer. Hopefully you found it interesting. Hopefully you find him as an interesting as an artist. Uh, I do. Like I said, he does like a, one kind of style for the most part, but he does it pretty well. Like he knows his thing and he does it. He executes. So uh, with that said, we're going to move on from our artist retrospective into our next segment, which is actually going to be some first appearances. Uh, I haven't, it's been a while. I don't do these all the time, uh, but this kind of gets back to the uh, forgotten first series that I used to do. So we're just going to talk about a couple of first appearances. And this week we're going to kind of theme it up and stick with Savage Dragon because I don't know, I feel like talking about Savage Dragon. So we're going to talk about his son, Malcolm Dragon first, because basically this is Savage Dragon now. I mean, it, unless you've, not known for a while now that the original Savage Dragon is dead and the current Dragon title since issue 193, I think it is, and they're up to like 236. But don't let those numbers fool you because there were some long layoffs and skips. For years, Malcolm Dragon has been the Savage Dragon in the Savage Dragon title. That said, his first is still one that just kind of just gets overlooked. It's just kind of out there. Granted, I know a lot of the early image titles have high print runs, but that doesn't stop Spawn 1 from selling all the time. Just things to keep an eye out for, because especially when there's a lot of them out there and it's early image, you can sometimes find these things even in dollar bins still. So keep an eye out for this. And the first thing I want to talk about with Malcolm Dragon is some places will say this is his first. I disagree. Uh, this Savage Dragon 29, it's an image or a vision, a future vision version of a son of uh, the Savage Dragon, but I don't know if it's even Malcolm. It doesn't really ring true to me to being the same person. Maybe it is, but it's still a vision future thing, so I don't know. It's a weird cameo thing. You make the decision for yourself, but this is all you're getting. This one panel here with uh, Wildstar basically seeing into the future and going, oh my god, who is this? And uh, it's another Savage Dragon. It's, you know, his son, basically. But that's the cameo you're getting in issue 29, but I, that's not really the one. The generally accepted first appearance for Malcolm Dragon is you're going to see his mother giving birth to him here on the cover, issue 33. So as you might guess, giving birth, this is going to be a baby first. But it's still a first nonetheless. This was November of 96, so a couple of months after that last one. Sorry I didn't announce the month, but you can see here, he, he's born. So here we go. We get the legit, kids born, legit first appearance to anyone ever is uh you know Malcolm Dragon here in issue 33. So... It is what it is. And like I said, this is one of those books that, you know, could sell odd places. It could sometimes sell for more than you would expect. Other times it could be very, very cheap, but still a book that you might be able to find out there for a buck if you go digging. Just look for this cover. Uh, again, you can see prices selling for five bucks, best offer on eight dollars, a 9.8 sold for 190. So there are still people who buy and will pay for high grade stuff. And uh, yeah, there are just copies out there. Uh, asking prices in that same kind of range where there's cheap ones where people are asking only five bucks to 10 bucks. And then there's the oddball asks that are higher at $35. Now, once the smaller ones clear out, those higher ones will be all that's left. Whether anybody pays that price or not, that's for the market to decide. I'm just pointing it out that this is a book that you can still probably find really, really cheap if you go flipping through those boxes and you get yourself a first. 
Now, as I mentioned, this isn't really a first appearance of the character, but this is when he takes over the title. And it's just another one to know, because there's a lot of Savage Dragon issues. We, we can talk about which ones are worth looking into and which are worth investing in, because there's tons. Most of them are going to say low print and are hard to find, because they are. It's low print. It's very selective. Uh, it's a very discerning uh, customer that still buys these. I still get these for some reason. I didn't get the whole run, though. There was a long stretch where I didn't get this at all. But I have, like, the first 100 into the you know, the next 100 to, you know, there's like a 50-issue stretch in the middle where I, I'm pretty weak and I don't have them. So I'll have to go and track them down. That said, issue 193 is the first appearance of Malcolm Dragon as the Savage Dragon because his father was, you know, given the chair. I think I'm given the chair in uh, the issue before. Not to ruin a 10-year-old story, but, you know, that's what happens. Uh, February 2014. Okay, eight years. Uh, that said, first issue in a bold new direction. This book, you know, does all right for itself, you know, for for what it is. So, you know, 10 bucks, 16 bucks, doesn't seem like all that much, but it used to be much higher and it may get there again, once again, who knows? Asking price is still in that same kind of 10 to $20 range. And you can see again, that pair of uh, 193 to 194 for 16 bucks. All right. So maybe it doesn't do all that much, but it's still better than a buck. And if you find it for a buck, I suggest you grab it. Sticking with the Savage Dragon, the current dragon. Malcolm also has kids. He has three, and uh, they are all from his wife, Maxine Dragon. Yes, he married a character from uh, you know, from the title, and she appeared a long, long time ago. The run here where it was a good bit them together, and they got the three kids, as I mentioned here. So her first appearance goes all the way back to uh, not the old, old days, but issue 68. So it's still a long time, like before he took over the title, 193. She first appeared in issue uh, 68 back in October 1999, and she appeared as a kid. So she was a kid here with the original dragon there visiting a school. Uh, she was friends with his, I guess, I guess like adopted daughter uh, at the time. I don't remember. Again, I'm very, it's been so long. Uh, so I know I should have brushed up on my dragon uh, history again before doing this, but I'm just going off the cuff here of what I remember you know, off the dome. But that's her. The little girl there is Maxine as a kid, and this is, technically her first uh and this book is one you can still find out there for pretty cheap uh so you can see here copies five bucks eight bucks it's kind of like the last issue oh wait that is the last issue my bad all right so this particular issue actually doesn't really sell all that well on its own like it's sold in lots but i couldn't really find any individual sales in the last couple of months to share with you to give you a market price so we're gonna look at what the asking price is and for this one it's like 10 bucks it's basically 10 to 12 dollars uh this first maxine dragon but again this is something you probably still find for a buck if you go dig it in those boxes find some savage dragon you see this crazy fighting chicken and uh there you go there's your first appearance of maxine now we're gonna move on to our next character i think our last dragon character that i want to kind of spotlight real quick and that is the uh she dragon um uh, yes the she dragon of course we have to have a female version right it's like she hulk why not look at the she dragon she's green she's strong that we're going to talk about her too uh but she dragon here uh, it's been around for a good long while in the uh, Savage Dragon run, and she kind of goes all the way back, cameo, I guess, to this March 1993 Savage Dragon versus the Savage Megaton Man. Uh, it's a crazy issue. This is one I know you see in those boxes. You see this in the dollar box. It's still there because there are a lot of them, and uh, I still see them. But she, she appears in cameo the character, but it's not. Uh, there she is. She's a couple panels in this. Doesn't really do much. Doesn't really say much. Uh, but there she is. You can see her in the background. That's really all you're kind of getting. Uh, so it is what it is. But still technically a first. So four bucks is not a surprise that that's all this really sells for. Uh, and like I said, asking prices, it's still only asking three to five dollars. Not a pricey book. Not something I'm saying you should go run out there and get. But if you come across it in a dollar box, might as well grab one. Just grab one, tuck it away in your PC. Why not? Who knows? Who cares? Right? It's just kind of fun. By and large, most people like when they're like it when their first appearances and then they end up on the cover. So a lot of people gravitate towards this. Uh, like almost a year later, uh, this Savage Dragon uh, issue twelve entered the She Dragon. So issue twelve is still within the first twelve issues of the well, the ongoing run. There was still Savage Dragon started with the mini, the first three issues, and then they restarted with the ongoing. So all right, so still within like the first you know, year or so. Copies of this thing can sell for as cheap as two bucks, a dollar, six dollars. It's not expensive. Again, this is an issue you could probably find for a dollar if you go digging in those bins. Asking prices, yeah, they might ask only like three bucks for a raw copy, but one reason or another, look, uh, 9.6 asks $55. It's not terrible if you find one in a box for a buck, 
get it graded, cost you 30 to get it graded. You still made yourself 20, $25. Uh, and then a nine, eight, $135 on this particular book. So who knows if you can find a high grade one, but just a kind of a fun thing to go and dig. Now, first appearances aside, the real book you want to look for for She Dragon is her one shot. Uh, this is a hidden little gem, and that's why we have it here. Even though this is not her first appearance, this is her first solo and only solo title. This July 2006, uh, this issue right here this is a one shot She Dragon. This thing does all right. So if you could find it, you've done well for yourself. Uh, raw copies can sell for like, you know, 30 bucks to 50 bucks. There's some best offers in there. Uh, and the asking prices are in the 70 to $100 range right now. But like I said, if you find this for a couple of bucks in a back issue bin at your shop, it could be worth your time picking it up. That's all I'm saying. So keep an eye out for that one. And now we're going to shift on over to variants, and we are going to start off tying in with our uh, Savage Dragon here. Figure why not, right? We're talking about Savage Dragon. There's not a lot of variants for us to cover. Actually, you know what? Not even just some of them. I think I did all of the variants on Savage Dragon. So yeah, this is a Savage Dragon heavy episode. Uh, and we're going to start in with this issue again the first malcolm dragon as the lead of the title this was a one in five apparently and this was a combo cover with uh eric larson and mcfarland i think uh, larson probably did the pencils mcfarland did the finishes so uh them tag teaming on this uh variant it's caused this book to be very tough to find even though it's only a one in five uh supposedly uh copy sold recently and it's sold for a healthy amount uh just putting this out there um, September 24th, a uh, raw copy sold for over $200. Yeah, for this book, this crazy ass uh, Savage Dragon book, over $200 for a one in five variant. So, that being such a low ratio, even though this is a low printed book, if your shop has copies, it could potentially have this copy. So, go look for it, keep an eye out for it. You probably don't even notice much of a difference from the original, the regular cover. You look at it, color scheme's kind of the same. It could just easily just be just. You know, you gloss over, you know, it just all looks like white noise. Keep an eye out for this one. As you can see, it can sell for quite a bit of money and there's none out there right now. So if you want to go shopping for one, there, there's none in the market for you to go buy at this moment when I'm doing this. Uh, other variants for Savage Dragon we could talk about, and some of these do pretty well, is this issue 40. Uh, this is just a B cover. This is not an incentive cover. It's a variant cover for issue, you know, issue 40. And you can probably guess why people gravitate towards this book, right? I mean, it's cheesecake. This is like classic 90s style uh, cheesecake cover. So you got She-Dragon there, uh, barely dressed. Yeah, so that's why this one sells. And it does sell pretty well, if you can find it. Um, I mean, 13 bucks it sold recently and $31 for 9.4. Yeah, I, I know. It doesn't seem like a whole heck of a lot, but that's what's sold. Asking prices are still pretty solid, though, where most asks are in the $40 range for raw copies and $400 for a 9.8. So, yes, the actual ones that are moving might be seem a little soft, but it, there's still a knowledge base, and a lot of people know about this book, so the ask could be and could remain pretty high for a while. Yeah, you could sneak one for cheap here and there where people don't care or don't know what they have, but by and large... Uh, this is going to command a little bit of a premium out of your wallet, even though it's only a B cover. Speaking of B covers, I don't know which one to consider the B cover here for this next one. This is another another She Dragon variant. Well, I can't really say it's a variant. It's basically a 50 50 split uh, for this issue 51, where they have a pink background, a pink trade dress background, and then there is this yellow trade dress background. But. From what I gather, it's equal numbers. So it's kind of like that profit that, uh, you know, from uh, Youngblood, uh, was that issue two? Uh, so, you know, the flip book. So it's like, yeah, the different color of the background, but I believe these are 50 50. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, you pick, the one, pick your poison. Which one do you like better? But they both sell for basically the same amount. So you can see here, this is like a $20 book. So if you find it in a dollar bin, go digging. This could be 20 bucks, yellow or pink. Either way. It's about 20 bucks. And what's on the market, it's kind of in that same range, 20 bucks, yellow or pink. So it doesn't make a difference which one you want to call the variant, which one you want to call the regular. It's a 50-50 split. So there it is. This one is an interesting, though. This is another interesting. And as you can see here, the variants here aren't a lot of incentives. We had the 1-1-5, one, one, and five, and then we had a B cover, and now we had a 50-50 split. The next variant I want to talk about in the Savage Dragon run goes all the way back to issue 10 is the new stand. And I know you'll see a lot of things listed as newsstand variant. And OK, it's got a barcode on it. Yeah, this has a barcode on it, too. But this newsstand variant is 
actually a variant. This is not the same cover that's on the regular issue 10. If you want to see the regular cover on issue 10, this is what the regular cover looks like with him fighting this little crab dude. That's the regular cover. Why they changed the cover art for the newsstand, which is actually the same cover as the ash can. I don't know, but they did. So that makes this a little different and a little unique, at least to most of the books that I see. Like newsstand variants generally are just the same cover uh, with a barcode on it. Maybe if the regular cover had a lot of frills and gimmicks, they might take the frills off and do an no frills version. Uh, and that's the newsstand. But outside of that, it's generally not different cover art in most cases. That said, this thing could still sell for uh, 20 to 30 bucks raw. Looks like a 60, $61 at auction for a uh, 9.6. Again, this isn't the thing you want to auction because who's looking for this? Not many people. So you're not going to get a, a lot of eyes. You're not going to get a lot of bids. Don't auction books like this. I keep telling you guys that. Hopefully you listen. But don't auction books that are not well known or hot at the moment. Uh, but as you can see here, asking prices are kind of all over the place uh, for this book. From as low as 20 bucks, 35 bucks, up to 60 bucks raw uh, on the market right now. So it's an interesting book. One to keep an eye out for if you're going digging in those boxes. Because again, high print runs, especially on those early Savage Dragons. Keep an eye out for it because it's different. It's unique. And our last one is another sort of not an incentive. It's just like a B kind of cover. And that's this issue 31, which it gained a lot of notoriety because it drops an F-bomb inside. And it's God dropping the F-bomb. And there, this is the uncensored version, uh, which you can see here. It's got, you know, again, God dropping the F-bomb. Tell them not to, not to mess with them. Uh, this issue 31, the image uh, box at the top is empty. That's the uncensored version. The uh, censored version, which I couldn't find an image of the interior part, has God is good in the image title. That's how you know that's the censored version. And I believe it bleeps out you know, the F-bomb that he drops inside. I don't know how they, they bleep it out. I couldn't actually find an image to share with you online, nor could I. I don't know if I have this one on hand, nor could I find it amongst all my mess. So I couldn't go digging out my copy to take a picture, but couldn't find a picture online of the censored version. I looked and I looked. Couldn't find it. So there's a censored version, but the cover difference is you'll see the God is good on, inside the image eye. So that's how you'll know at the outset which one you're finding if you're digging in a box. And you can see here for the prices that it's not really a whole heck of a lot of a difference between the two. Uh, uncensored version, 20 bucks sale, uh, $15 for it looks like the censored version. And then somebody sold a pair for only 20 bucks for both. So, you know, 10 to $20 really. Either way, either one is kind of what we're talking about here. Asking prices are kind of in that same kind of range, too. As you can see, $16 to $20. Those are both uh, uncensored versions, just as examples. Just to give you a sense, this is $10 to $20 books. So, once again, Savage Dragon, I know a lot of them are littered in those cheap bins. So, these are a couple that, if you find them, yeah, maybe you might consider grabbing them. Yeah, just consider it. That's it. Let's move on. I know this is a long one. Like I said, I got a lot of books to talk about this week. I don't know why I picked so many books, but I did. And uh, we're going to move on now to later prints. Uh, the later printings I have for you this week also follow a theme, and I get it. Don't worry. We're taking a break. We're not doing any more Savage Dragon. Rest easy. We're not doing Savage Dragon anymore. We're taking a break. We're going to switch things, switch gears. We're going to go over to Amazing Spider-Man. I know everybody loves Spider-Man, so let's look at the new ways to die second prints because some of these are pretty damn pricey, and uh, they're pretty cool covers. Uh, this one is kind of this, like a weird variation on the regular one uh there's like a black and white version as well so it's not a lot of difference between the normal cover and the second print here but here's the second print for issue number uh what's this 568 i believe this is 568 uh yeah first anti-venom second print here we go uh 20 bucks 24 bucks for this one is what it actually sells for raw uh and asking prices on this are still kind of in that range 25 30 uh, as high as 85 uh, that was actually signed, so let's keep that one out of the book. I didn't notice it was signed when I took the clip, but 25 to 30 bucks raw. That's the asking price. Sale prices, 20 to 25, same kind of range. Uh, that's what this one goes for, this uh, first anti-venom. But the one that people really, really gravitate towards for the, I guess, the first anti-venom is actually the next issue. Uh, so I don't know, you want to get into the, we want to get into the whole cameo and all that stuff, but the 569 second print here with the uh, John Romita Jr. art, which... It's not terrible. I know I, I run them down a lot because of some of the stuff is pretty bad. This is not terrible. Pretty cool image. And I like how it interplays with the trade dress. So that is very interesting as well. This thing sells for a lot. 
So if you can find this 569 second print, this one could sell for a lot. As you can see here, 110 bucks raw. Uh, best offer 585 for a 9.6. Uh, 9.0 sold for 150 bucks. And then what was that last one at the bottom? A 9.4, 175 or so uh, plus. And then shipping and all that cost aside. Uh, but this sells. And there's a bunch more. Those are example sales. But this one actually sells and sells pretty consistently. And the asking prices right now are pretty steep with 499 and 500 to 600 bucks raw they're asking right now and there's a 9.4 also asking 500 bucks with 12 watchers it, it's a pricey book so if you can find this one or if you have it there you go there's where your market is uh and if you can go digging in a box and luckily find this and find this for a decent price this is what you're looking at so hopefully if it's not priced too much you definitely might want to consider grabbing this if it's cheap enough uh, that said, this next one's not bad either. If we want to get to 570, another second print. This is a cover that you could probably guess is a wraparound. So I'm going to show you the whole wraparound image here. Uh, pretty cool. Anti-Venom, fighting Venom. Pretty cool cover. I kind of dig it. Uh, this one also does pretty well. This one sells for about, uh, was it 70? Um, uh, no, 30 to $70 kind of raw. That 300 plus dollar one in the middle had the last issue. So it's 569 to 570 together. So it's a lot. You can see it sells for a lot uh, together. Asking prices here also $70, $75 raw, $400 bucks for a 9.6. So, yeah, pretty pricey. Even not even 9.8. That's a 9.6 asking $400. So definitely not an easy book to, uh, I guess, get in high grade this second print. So keep an eye out for it. And I got two more quick ones we're going to look at here. This one is actually probably the cheapest of the bunch. Uh Granted, it's not the greatest cover. I kind of like the bar there on the side. I don't know. Something about it makes it look kind of like a novel. It makes it look a little bit different. But the 571 is probably the cheapest of this group in that it's only looking at about 20 to uh, 30 bucks. Oh, did I, I flip-flop them? Those are the asking prices on that side. The sale prices are on the opposite side. Sorry, I did the I did them reverse. Uh, 10 bucks, one sold for a raw. 9.8, best offer on her bucks. 9.8, 90 bucks. So like I said, this one's definitely cheaper than the last. A uh, couple, and then we got one last one finishing out this uh, the storyline here, uh, or at least book five of New Ways to Die. Pretty cool scorpion uh, image here because well, you know, you know, Mac Gargan scorpion bought the venom uh, symbiote suit off Eddie Brock, and Eddie Brock got this to become anti venom. It's a whole weird, crazy story. But 572, this is the second print here. Not bad, it's definitely an interesting image, but. It's not bad and it does okay it's not as high as the oh, those early ones and but it's not as cheap as that last one raw copies 40 65 dollars actually sales and then the ascii prices are in that 30 to 65 dollar range i'm telling you, those top two are the same book i don't know if they had more than one copy or if something happened and that deal fell through but still 30 to 65 is kind of that range for this particular one and now i got one last segment for you Got some weird stuff because I got to cover weird stuff too. And we're going to hit up a couple of oddities before we call it a night. Uh, and the oddities that I'm going to start with have no real rhyme or reason. These don't go together. There's no theme here like I've had in all the other segments. And don't worry again. No more Savage Dragon. Oddities. First one, it being Halloween season, let's look at the Rob Zombie Spook Show. Spook Show International, actually. And uh, this is issue one, which is actually, I believe, a cable cover. So J. Scott Campbell cover on this issue one. This series only ran like nine issues and they all have pretty solid covers and they give you that same kind of like Crypt Keeper, uh, old school EC horror kind of a circle box kind of thing going here with the layouts. They all could do pretty well. Granted, issue one is probably the, you know, the gem of the bunch that you want to find. And uh, this thing could sell from, you know, 35, $35 raw uh, for individual. And then you can see sets. Sets could sell for as cheap as, $35 for all nine issues or $110 for all nine issues. Crazy. You know, it's crazy range. So uh, if you can get a set or put a set together of these, you might do all right. Uh, because even when you look at the asking prices here, raw copies, 15 to 30 bucks for the issue one. Uh, the set, somebody now is asking 300 bucks for it. So good luck. Try to put it together if you can. But really, it's J. Scott Campbell on his own kind of one I wanted to... Uh, spotlight here as the issue one uh you know it's a mature reader's book as well so you're not going to find it in just any old box uh somebody they might put it in a special area separate section maybe a horror box or something like that so who knows what oddball books like this you might be able to dig out when you look in those weird sections and weird corners of your shops so definitely go dig in those weird corners uh you might find something speaking of weird this book here 
popped a while back. Uh, now people mostly forgotten about it and don't care. They don't give a shit. But uh, this Mystic, number 15, for a little while, everybody was talking it up because it was the first appearance of Harry Potter in comic books. The beta book. I mean, it is what it is. Inside this book, there's a panel that has all these characters from all these different companies. Apparently, I mean, they're not named. We don't know. This happens all the time in comic books. It's not a big deal. Oh, well, yeah, Scarlet Witch and, and Morpheus and the Seven Dwarves didn't really cross over into a cross-gen book, but they kind of did, I guess. But you can see right here, right in front of uh, Etrigan and Dormammu is uh, Harry Potter, apparently, because there's a little boy with glasses and a wand that has a star on the top of it, which is not, you know, like Harry Potter's wand, but that's the point. It's like that close to little weird little bootleg version, kind of like Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, when they take the character and then they kind of tweak them a little bit to make them a little, they're recognizable, but not completely recognizable. But this is Harry Potter, supposedly. So this book got it right. This was like 50 bucks at one time. This was hitting. God, God bless anybody who paid $50 for this book. This was a dollar bin book that everybody was grabbing out of them. Even the shops were digging in their own boxes saying, I got to sell this Harry Potter book because people are buying it. Now, people have forgotten about it. They don't care anymore. But you still might be able to find it. And who knows? Maybe one day the spec cycle will come back around and people will start talking about this stupid book for one reason or another. So be prepared. So now you can see copies selling for 7 bucks to 10 bucks raw, 110 bucks for a 9.8 best offer. Uh, so it was cheaper than that. While Raw copies, you still got some holdouts asking at $40, but at the same time, other people can't get a bid on $399 or $15 buy it now. It's $9.850. bucks. It's, it is what it is. So go check those dollar bins again because it might be in there again because now nobody's talking about it. So the dealers, your shop owners, probably not going to bother when they're buying these new collections, digging and searching for this when they see, oh, there's cross gen in here. Who gives a shit? Cross gen, we're gonna throw it all out there for a dollar again. Whereas that short time, oh, cross gen, let's look for that Mystic 15. Let's find that Harry Potter book. Probably not anymore. Well, he's not right now. But like I said, it's very it's this is all cyclical. Uh, this could come back around again. Who knows? All it takes is people start talking about it again, and then people start buying it again. Yeah, it is what it is. But just be prepared and go look again for cheap. I'm not telling you go and buy any of these. Don't even go buy the $15 one. It's probably too much for this book. But if you find it in a box, maybe consider it at your shop. Support your LCS. My last book is a real weird one. It's weird because it's a forgotten imprint. Malibu Comics. We'll get more into them one of these days. I don't like cross-gen. Uh, this is issue zero of Firearm. Why is this book interesting? Well, this book is interesting, at least to me, because it came packaged with a VHS tape. Yes, a VHS tape, which you could probably go and get graded too if you like that sort of thing but here firearm number zero limited edition cost 15 bucks to buy it outright at the time to get this little vhs tape this little movie like a little video that you got a little story for this this character and an issue zero uh right here and there's the book the book is right there packaged with the vhs tape which you can see more clearly on the right and what does this thing sell for well, they actually still have sealed copies of this actually out there, and it sells for well nine bucks to twenty bucks. People have, I think, they snuck them personally because again, this is not a lot of people know about this this silly thing, and not a lot of people care. So, having these at auction was probably not the smartest thing. Both ended with one bid, one bid, nine bucks, twenty two bucks. What would those buyers have paid for this if they didn't have to just place place that initial bid down? Who knows? So if they put a put best offer, maybe they would have done better for themselves. But that's what actually sold. Asking prices, however, a little more savvy. The current listings, not at auction. Asking prices with some best offers. Asking about $40 to $55. That makes a little more sense to me. For something as rare and random as this, that makes sense for those sealed copies. And then look, even just the comic by itself is somebody's asking $30 bucks for it, which... I don't know if that's a crazy asking price, considering, again, it's a weird little thing. I don't know if the comic on its own is as cool without the VHS tape, unless this thing gets optioned and all of a sudden we're firearms, the next new darling indie thing that people are going to start hunting. Uh, I don't know if the comic on its own really is that desirable. I think the real novelty here is the VHS tape. But, hey, 
It is what it is. My only point in telling you this is it's really odd and just something to keep an eye out for. Who knows what you can stumble across at a Goodwill at a yard sale and you see something like, what the heck is this? This is what the heck that is. Firearm, number zero, with a movie or TV show VHS tape. Anyway, thankfully, that's all I got for you this week. I know it was a long one. I had a lot. Uh, I don't know why I had so much in here. Like I said, I just kind of started to... Picking up steam. There's a snowball effect, I guess. But that's all I got for you this week. Thanks for stopping by and hanging in there through all these Savage Dragon books and Shannon Mayer and some of these weird, weird, weird indie books that I just decided to talk about this week. I don't know. I have fun doing this stuff. Hopefully you're still having fun going through these books with me. And hopefully you found this interesting. Let me know again what you think in the comments section. Let's keep telling those friends so we can keep growing the channel. Yes, we passed 2K. We did all those giveaways. We probably will hold off on that sort of a huge giveaway until we hit 3K. But we're well on our way already. So let's keep on marching that way. And we'll have plenty of giveaways in between now and then. But uh, uh, for now, that's all I got for you. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll come back tomorrow for Chasing Ghosts. Come back on Wednesday for the live tax show where we're going to be covering and tier listing all of the great horror movies, this being the month of October. So uh, come join us. Have some fun talking about some horror movies and uh, all the other news. I think we might even talk about some New York Comic Con stuff since I know we'll be a little late, late to the game as everybody else has already covered it. But hey, we'll still go over a few things because we do our weekly show on Wednesday and New York Comic Con happened right after we were done. So that all said... Thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate you all. And I will see you soon with some more content. All right. Later.